Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. Well, we made it, gang. A few days ago, we passed 5,000 subscribers, which is pretty damn awesome considering three months ago, we only had 2,000. And to celebrate, I'll be making an announcement at the end of this video where you can win a portable green slash blue screen. But onto today's bite-sized effect. As I mentioned in our Iron Man episode, I would show you how to build your own custom widgets, because really, it's not that hard. So let's do that today. In order to do this, grab the download pack of custom parts below, and a big thanks to SuperJabber425 over on DeviantArt for creating the bulk of these. Now let's get to work. Okay guys, let's get straight to the point and make some widgets. Well okay, that was a joke. Anyone remember that show? Anyone? No? Okay, let's get started then. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you've grabbed the download pack in the description. That's my HUD parts, and the A Toots ones are also below. That way you can mix and match if you like, cause my ones are just Photoshop layers, and they actually built theirs in After Effects. Either way, the process for building these widgets is the same. Now here is an example widget from over on AE Toots. I've got it set to quarter res because they've got so much crap going on here that it makes my computer chug just to preview it. I'm showing you this for one reason only. It's overkill guys. It does look impressive, and I'm not saying it doesn't by any stretch of the imagination. But once you sync the head movement to this comp, you're going to lose a lot of that fine detail and just eat up your render time. My philosophy on this one is just to keep it basic and save that render time. So let's build a simple eyepiece like we see here in this example from Iron Man. So before we start building, let's check out an example of what we can make. As you can see, it's a pretty decent match to our example eyepiece. Now, let's jump over to Photoshop and I'll show you how I've put this together really quick. As you can see, here's our eyepiece. If you look over here in the layer panel, there's about 5 layers on top of each other to make it up. If I switch them off individually, you can see that each part is on its own layer. This is important for when we import it into After Effects, as we'll be able to import these layers as a composition, rather than just a standard Photoshop image. So let's head back to After Effects to see it in action. Let's double click in the project window and import our HUD eyepiece. You'll notice you have some options. It's here that we want to drop this menu down and select Import as a Composition. Making sure that Merge Layer Styles into Footage is selected. And BAM! We now have that Photoshop file in a comp with all of its separate parts beckoning us to play with them. But it's got no 3D depth. Yet. So here's how we give it some. Let's firstly head up and grab that Anchor Point tool. And we'll make sure all of our layers have roughly the same center point. A good guide for this is working from the very bottom and our smallest layer and working your way up. We'll then follow that up by selecting all of our layers and making them 3D by clicking this little box right here. We'll then head up to layer and add a new camera. Any settings fine and click OK, as we're only going to be using this to check the depth of our eyepiece. We'll then head back up, grab our camera orbit tool, this little camera one here, and rotate the camera a little just so we can see where everything is sitting. There we go, that looks good. Now we can start moving things. So let's select all of our layers once again. We're gonna hit P to bring up those position controls once more, and we're gonna tweak this one at the end. That's our Z-Space controls. Okay, now we can start moving these layers back and forth until you achieve a look that you like. Now don't space them too far apart, but make sure they have enough space between each other that the 3D looks convincing. Feel free to grab the camera tool at any point and zoom around your work to see how it looks from other angles. The end result should look a bit like mine. Now, let's move on to the next step. I've built another widget comp that you may recognize from our last episode. It's called HUD Target. Now guys, this one was built the exact same way as the first one. I followed every step to a T. So there's really no need to show you again. I've included both of these files in a download pack as well. Now let's make them a little fancier, shall we? So we've got all our parts on separate layers, right? which means we can animate them independent of each other. That way your widget seems a little more alive on the screen. For example, let's grab the border of our target widget and let's have it rotate back and forth like it's trying to find something. All we have to do is hit R, hit the stopwatch on orientation, scrub forward on the timeline, rotate our layer, skip ahead, add another keyframe, skip ahead once more, maybe rotate it back, skip ahead, add another blank keyframe, skip ahead once more, and rotate it again. If we check out a preview, we now have that layer rotating on its own and it's not affecting the other layers. We can also grab our little target layer here and have it search for targets or trying to find something. For that, we hit P, hit the stopwatch on position, and skip through the timeline, moving that layer around until we say settle on this point. 
I might even animate the rotation as well, just slightly, just to add a little bit more depth. Now when we preview, it's looking more and more like it's a functioning... Uh, thing. Okay guys, I've skipped ahead and animated a few more layers, and we're just checking out a preview of the animated shot. One thing I want to reinforce is the basics remain the same here guys. Animate the position or the rotation, or both, but not to the point where it looks stupid or over the top. Remember, people are supposed to be focusing on the actor performing in the shot, not all the crap going on next to their face. Now guys, I just also wanted to mention, you can totally build these things in After Effects as well. Just cycle through the HUD parts and grab the ones you want and build your own custom widgets that way. You can even collapse down the AE Toots widgets or last week's graphics in motion parts and grab the single element comps you like and just put them all together. Now, if you want to custom colorize your widgets, that's a little different to what we did last week. This time around, we'll select our layer, head up to Effect, Color Correction and add a tint. I'm going to pick, say, a nice blue right here. I'm going to bump the tint amount down to around 50%. That way the color remains pale and doesn't overpower our widget. From there, it's straight up to Effect, Stylize and add a glow, just like last week. And we'll play with the threshold and the radius settings to find our sweet spot. Once you're happy, just copy and paste these effects onto your other layers and change the color as you see fit. Once you're done, you should have all your layers looking all colorful and sweet-like. Another option if you don't want to tint and glow is using Video Copilot's Lightsaber Glow preset, if you have it. It gives you a different look, but it also looks pretty damn cool. Now our last little nugget of info here is adding some battle damage glitches to your widgets. Because hey, accidents do happen. There's a really easy way to do this too. For this, I'm going to head back to our effect shot from last week. So all we have to do here is add a new adjustment layer, head over to presets and type bad. Grab the preset marked bad TV week and drop it on our adjustment layer. From there, all we do is hit T to bring up opacity, crank it down to zero, scrub ahead a little bit on the timeline, hit the stopwatch, move a few frames more, crank it up to 100, skip ahead a few frames and back down to zero again. You can then copy and paste those keyframes a few times and you'll end up with this, some glitchy widgets. But it's also affecting our footage below. To fix that, head down and turn off your footage, hit Control M to add it to the render queue, change your settings to lossless with alpha right here, We'll then change the format to QuickTime and render out a widget pass of your footage. We'll then import that back into After Effects, turn off those old widgets, drop our glitch footage in and change the transfer mode to screen. We'll then head down and turn our footage back on and there you have it. We now have battle damage glitchy widgets. See, told you it was easy, like really easy. So that's building custom widgets for your own Iron Man HUD. As you can see, you can make them as simple or as detailed as you like. I've also found a way more detailed tutorial on widgets over on AE Toots. So if you're interested, click the link in the description. But for me personally, it's kind of overkill. Now at the top of the show, I mentioned our little competition. To celebrate 5,000 subscribers on the channel, I wanted to give away this collapsible green slash blue screen you can see here. As I noticed in the comments that some of you don't have access to a green screen. So if you want to be in the running to win this bad boy, simply film yourself saying, this is, insert your name, and until next time, keep learning. Upload it to YouTube and send me the link on the email address below with the subject line, screen comp. Every person that enters will go into the draw which I will randomly pick live on the show. As a bonus, every clip will be featured in an episode with the subscriber's name displayed on screen. Entries open starting now and finish on the 31st of August, so hop to it. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new in town, there's a nifty subscribe button right there. And until we meet again in a few days, keep learning.